Well, hi again, everybody. I'm Julie John, and I'm here with Dr. Bob Rothbard of Rancho Cucamonga Optometric Center for another in our video series about optometry and vision. Bob, tell me about some of the most fascinating cases that you've run across in your practice. Uh, Julie, two of them come to mind. Okay. One of them was several years ago. She was referred from another patient here, and she says, I want you to take a look at her. And her main complaint was she had brain surgery and she started walking into walls. I know that sounds oh. funny, but it really isn't. No. What happened was as she was walking Maybe funny straight, the first yeah, few when times you, when you then... hear it, you think, how much <laughs> yeah. did you have to drink? Well, she didn't, of course. <laughs> what happened was as she was walking, she'd start to veer off and walk into walls. Wow. And she couldn't figure out why. So, he examined so this sort of her. had just come upon her after some time? After the, sur no, after oh, after the, sur after surgery. After the surgery, it was sudden. Oh, okay. So what we did was we examined her. She was 20-20. There was no eye pathology. 20 -20. Yeah, she wow. saw decently. But what happened was when you measured her, her peripheral vision was off. And what I mean by that in her case was when you measure peripheral vision, you always cover one of the eyes. Mm -hmm. So when we covered the eye, she would notice that, hey, she couldn't see any vision on this half of her... Oh, even head. though that eye yeah, was open? Yeah, open. She couldn't wow. see anything over here. If I uh -huh. would have wiggled my finger, she couldn't see anything until it got past here. And then all, all, everything on this side she was able to see. Wow. Same thing when the other eye was covered. She couldn't see anything over so here. So still on the right side of the Right. Was so it was a, what's called a right field hemianopsia. Right field Sounds means very... right. Hemi means half. half. Anopsia, gone. <laughs> and so... We actually were able to at least tell her what the this problem is. This is a happy is. story, right? Well, it's, it's, happy, it's going to have a happy we're ending. Have a happy ending. By the way, just telling someone what their problem is, that it's not all in your head, that's, that's a good thing. That's big, yeah. That but means being a lot. able to treat it is a bigger thing. Sure. So, what we did with her is we put on some lenses that basically just shifted the world from left to right. So those lenses are somehow refracting or something? Well, or? not refracting in the term of making things clear. Okay. What it actually did was move the world over. Wow. And of course, I put it on both ways to see which way it best suited her. Sure. But when we actually put it on her, it was like a miracle because she actually was able to walk straight without walking into walls. Oh, that's huge for her. Now, the biggest problem was with her, there were several things. One, her physician who did the surgery told her she was malingering, which oh. she wasn't that she was making it all up. Oh, man. Secondly, she couldn't read well, if at all. Uh -huh. She couldn't drive. She couldn't work. Oh. So she was totally depressed after the whole thing. Sure, I can As soon as she that. found out what we did, like, turned her life around. I'll bet. Over a very short period of time, too. Oh, that must have made so, you feel really good. So that was really neat. Yeah. And uh, I felt really good that we were able to deal with that. Oh, the yeah. second person, interesting case, yes. happened more recently. Mm -hmm. A uh, patient came back, I referred her out, because she came in with headaches mm -hmm. and blurred vision. Well, mm -hmm. most of the patients come in with headaches and blurred vision. Sure, it's a common thing, I'm sure. Very. <laughs> but her problem wasn't common. First first of all, I wasn't able to correct the vision in the one eye to 20-20, which is always a red flag. You were not able to. I was not able to. Oh, Two, okay. there was something wrong with the optic nerve, which was, which I was very uh, easily able to see when I looked in the eye. Oh. But the most important factor was the fact that when we did the peripheral vision test, both peripheral vision, the peripheral vision from both eyes was off. Oh. So that automatically tells you it's more of a problem with the brain than the eye. If it's both eyes, then it's right. independently, then it's more a problem with the brain. Exactly. Oh, Chances wow. of the eye having the same, two eyes having the same peripheral vision problem is rare. But when it's in the brain... Then it affects both it, eyes. It affects both eyes yeah. usually. So... We referred her out immediately, it took two weeks for the insurance company to get her over to the appropriate source, which, what the heck, uh, we won't <laughs> editorialize. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but as soon as the ophthalmologist saw what the problem was, she didn't wait for anything. She had some imaging uh, done mm -hmm. of the brain, and they didn't find any tumor. That's good. But what they did find in the last time of looking at it was an incredibly big aneurysm. So wow. much so they scheduled surgery immediately. She almost died from what she said on the operating table. Oh my gosh. But she didn't. Uh, she came back. She lost the eye. 
and she said, the surgeon said, we didn't realize eye doctors do this, but whoever <laughs> your eye doctor is, go hug him because basically he saved your life. Wow. And she actually wrote a letter, thank you for saving my life. Because she would have never known she had that aneurysm. She never would have known. It would have been missed. And the fact is, at least it was something that the surgeons were able to operate on. Wow. And it really makes you feel good. And I believe, and I, I had another individual like that many years before, mm-hmm. came back and says, comes in very strong, I want to shake your hand. <laughs> and so, again... Same thing with the aneurysm. Then I had one. Wow. says, thanks, Doc. I want to let you know you cost me $80,000. And I said, what? <laughs> he says, well, it cost the insurance company because I sent them out. He had some visual function, you know, noticing certain auras of vision coming on, going off. So he re- again, we referred him. And he had complete blockage, almost complete blockage of the arteries in the neck, the, the carotids. carotid artery? Oh, and my gosh. And they had to do a rotor rooter enterotomy and clear it out and, and he was fine you, well I didn't you, find out what the problem was I knew it needed referral but you knew something was not right it was a skew uh-huh. and fortunately another one so it's really wow. interesting dealing with these individuals yeah that's very meaningful the effect you've had on people's lives and the detective and work that you've done on these cases exactly and one of the things I want to bring up Julie is a lot of times when you're dealing with vision problems it's just not a matter of clarity there's a person behind the eyes oh yeah absolutely so and every, case, as is every unique. case is unique and even though you might give someone 20 20 vision or better they might say hey it's too clear or i just can't <laughs> yeah. function like this or the floor is coming up so there's various things you have to look at the person because right. most of the time individuals are not making this up they oh, really right. do have a problem and, uh, it takes a special you, doctor to listen well, to the patient. Well, you got to be able to listen to, and to see just exactly what the problem is. And optometry, I feel more than most professions, you're able to deal with this. You have to ask the questions because I dealt with a computer person. You know those people, right? <laughs> I've heard about them, yeah. The, the chic geek <laughs> over here. Uh, in your profession, two plus two always equals four. <laughs> yes. In mine, it usually does. But not necessarily. What I mean by that is you can find what you think are the answers, but there's so many human factors that go into it that you have to explore each one. Definitely. Well, aren't we lucky that there is an eye doctor like you who does explore all of those avenues? Thanks a lot for the interview, Dr. Bob.